In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to add refrigerant to a 410A system. This also applies to an R22 system. I'm gonna drop some serious HVAC knowledge bombs, so stay tuned. All right, so before we get into charging this system, I wanna mention the things that you'll need to do this project. Number one is a gauge set. You absolutely need this to charge your system or to top it off. I recommend CPS, Yellow Jacket, these name brands. You can still get a decent gauge set for less than $150. And I highly recommend these low loss fittings. These are a game changer and they allow you to keep all your refrigerant either in here or in your unit. Now, the question that I get asked all the time is, how am I supposed to do this if I can't get refrigerant? Now, the short answer to that question, and I'm going to do a full video on this in the future, is you need to get your EPA license. It's a pretty easy thing to do. You can spend $300 on a, a class. They will tell you everything you need to know to get that EPA license. And once you have it, you have it for life. You don't ever have to renew it. And once you have that, you can go on to Ability Refrigerants. This is something that many people don't know. And you can buy a two pound bottle like this. It's about the size of a propane bottle. You can buy a five pound bottle. You can buy a 30 pound bottle. And all you have to do is check a box that says, I have my EPA license, or I'm going to resell this refrigerant. You don't have to submit anything to that website. I purchased this on abilityrefrigerants.com. I got it in like three days, super fast shipping. And I'm gonna be using this little bottle to show you how to top off a R410A condensing unit. Now, before we hook up our gauges and get into this process, I want to mention that if you're low on refrigerant, you probably have a leak. The first thing you want to do is locate that leak and fix it. It could be as simple as a Schrader core that's loose. It could be one of the um, nuts that holds the liquid line on the evaporator coil. I've seen that a lot. So my recommendation would be to look for those easy signs first. Um, you can look for oil seepage around the connections at the evaporator coil or here at the condenser. And that's a good indicator that maybe your line set has a leak. Um, if you want to get real technical, you can get a refrigerant leak detector and you can check inside the evaporator coil. So once you have that leak fixed, let's get into how to get that refrigerant into your unit. Make sure that you're using gloves when you hook this up. Even if you have a mistake, this acts as an extra layer of protection. So we're going to take our high side hose. Just going to make sure that these bottom ones are all tight. So the high side is going to attach to this small 3 8 line right here. That's considered the high side or the liquid line. And we're gonna do this real quick and you'll notice how little refrigerant, if any, comes out with these low loss fittings. So with this, you want to tighten this all the way down, back it off just a hair, and that will save the life of these low loss fittings. So we notice we have pressure now. We're gonna do the same thing on the low side. Crank it all the way down and then back it off. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna burp the line. When we attached those hoses, the refrigerant came rushing in and it trapped a little bit of air on these two lines. So what we're gonna do is just crack this enough to where that line will get all of the air out. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our bottle here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our hose up. Again, we're gonna make sure that one's snug. I'm gonna hook this one up all the way, back it off just a smidge. We're gonna open up our bottle all the way. We're just gonna burp this. That's plenty. Now we're gonna flip it upside down and we'll turn our system on. Now, like I said before, if, you're, if your system is low on refrigerant, this needle will probably be below the 32 threshold. We're hovering right at about freezing right now. So um, in order to really dial this in to exactly the pressure that you are supposed to have, or what they call target superheat, target subcooling, you really need to first determine if you have a piston or a TXV metering device. Now you can just go down to your furnace and look at that coil. 
and you can pretty easily tell most times whether it's a piston or a TXV. Now the reason we say that is if you have a piston, you're going to check superheat. If you have a TXV, you're going to check subcooling. Now in this book, it shows these different methods. This is for subcooling and this is for superheat. Now my system is a piston type and so we're going to be checking superheat. Now we're not going to get into target superheat and subcooling. I have a separate dedicated video for this. This is just on the procedure how to get it above the freezing temperature here so you avoid having your lines freeze and you can get air conditioning again. So we've already burped all three lines. This is upside down and open. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just crack this low side and you see how that's going up. We're just going to start throttling it in. You don't want to open it up full blast. Just throttle in a little bit, maybe five or ten seconds worth and then close it back down. Let it stabilize and see where it's at after that. So as we can see now, we are above that 32 freezing threshold. We want to get it closer to like maybe closer to the 40 degree mark. So we're going to feed in a little bit more here. And let that stabilize. Now just for reference, if you come and your system is at like 75 PSI, automatically with 410 you can pretty much tell that that's a low system. And granted, this is based on if you have good airflow at the vents, you have a clean air filter, your evaporator coil is clean, your condensing coils are clean. Uh, those are the first things that you really need to check. And then you can proceed with adding refrigerant. Now with an R22 system, I've seen some as low as 50 or 40 PSI. Um, on a hot day, you want to have about 75 PSI, which should correlate to about 40, 42 degrees at the evaporator coil. Now, in case I didn't mention this, this temperature right here on the pink scale, that tells you what the temperature of your evaporator coil should be. So with R22, 40 degrees at the evaporator coil would correlate to about 65 degrees-ish. And for 410A, 40 degrees correlates with about 125 or something like that. It's pretty basic. There's not much to it. Um, if you're in a situation where your coils are frozen, your line is frozen, you can really do this in a pinch. You can get a small bottle and save a lot of money because these companies will charge tons of money. They mark up this refrigerant, especially R22, like 100 times over. Well, folks, it's as simple as that um, to add refrigerant to your system. Again, there's other factors, but I wanted to just show you the very basics of how to get refrigerant, how to add it to the system, and it's kind of dependent on your air filter being clean, coils being clean, evaporator coil being clean. But if you have all those things first, you can simply add refrigerant and you should be able to get your cooling back and save a bunch of money. Now I'm gonna show you one last tip on how to remove the gauges. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to turn this back off and we'll disconnect that later. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're gonna start by removing the high side. We're gonna do this real fast, and you'll see how little refrigerant comes out because of these low loss fittings. That's it. Now, we have the high side um, taken off. Basically, 300 PSI of refrigerant is trapped in these hoses. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to open both of these. You'll notice what happens. See how the high side is going down and equalizing with the low side. Now we've essentially let that 300 PSI go through the manifold into the blue side and back into the system. So that was able to preserve that refrigerant to keep it in the system rather than taking it out with the gauges. And also you wanna let any residual stuff out of your gauges so it's not just sitting with pressure. Lastly, we're going to take the low side off, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. 
Well guys, I really hope you found this video helpful and found it informative and learned things that you didn't know about this video. If you did find this video helpful, the only thing I ask is please leave it a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. Leave me a comment in the uh, comment section and let me know what you thought about this video. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.